Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss, and I'm here at Harvard Medical School with David Corey, a professor of neurobiology who looks at the inner workings of our ears and wants to talk about how our ears work and how loud noises can actually physically break things in our ears and cause us to lose our hearing. That's right. Thanks for <clears throat> having me. The, the thing that's really interesting about hearing is that it fundamentally is a situation where you have to convert a mechanical stimulus, a sound wave, into something the brain can understand, and that's electrical signals. So there's there's cells in the inner ear that do this mechanical to electrical conversion, and that's the fundamental first step in hearing. So we're wearing microphones right now, and they're taking the vibrations of the air and converting them into electrical signals. You, we've got little things in our ears that do basically the same thing? Basically the same thing. There are about 20,000 little microphones in each ear. They're cells, of course. And when sound comes in, it makes a part of that cell vibrate back and forth. And then the cell can sense that vibration and turn it into an electrical signal. And you went out in your garage and built one of these for us, basically. This is 50,000 times bigger than the real thing. But. Yeah, so here's kind of a, a garage model of, of these cells. They're called hair cells because they have a little bundle of about 100 cilia coming out of the top. This is about 50,000 times bigger, as you said. What's really interesting is, is this very clever system that the cell has evolved in order to be mechanically sensitive. You can see that the cilia are sort of stiff and they pivot back and forth, but there's a little kind of a hole at the top of each cilium that's got a the equivalent of a cork in it. And if we just push that bundle over, then the cork comes out, lets electric current flow into the stereocilium, down into the cell, and changes the voltage inside the cell. And so that's basically the mechanical to electrical conversion. So sound waves make these hair cells wave and open up channels for electricity to flow that goes to our brain and we then hear those sounds. That's right, and conversational speech uses frequencies of say two or 3,000 cycles per second or hertz. Um, so this is moving back and forth two or 3,000 times a second and the little channels are opening up and closing that often. So these things are what help us hear, but they're also what can break if we hear sounds that are too loud, right? Yes, the, the, in particular, the very fine filament that attaches the side of one stereocilium to the equivalent of the cork is very fragile. And so a normal hearing um, sound, kind of conversational levels, would make the bundle move by only a little bit. But a louder sound could make it move a great deal, snap the filament, and then that part of the cell wouldn't be working anymore. And that's the kind of thing that happens when you get ringing in your ears, right? When, when these break, you've damaged it to a point where there's, there's something going on, but it can grow back this little That's piece, right. right. Say you go to a rock concert, you come out with ringing in your ears, you know you've done something bad, but the cell knows how to repair these filaments. And so five or 10 hours later, maybe when you wake up the next morning, your hair is pretty much back to normal, um, probably because these have been replaced. On the other hand, if you keep going to rock concerts, the damage can be cumulative, or if you hear a really loud sound, what actually happens is the stereocilia can be torn off the cell altogether, and the cell doesn't have a way of repairing the stereocilia. So once they've lost the cilia, then the cell tends to die, and you're not going to get another one. So rock concerts are bad for this spot. I assume that like a cannon would be bad for the, the, the larger amount, but what What's the level of sound? Should we worry only about cannons, or is it something like a lawnmower too? Yeah, for instance, when I was making this, I was using a power saw, and that might generate a sound of somewhere around 100 or 105 decibels. And I used hearing protection because that kind of sound exposure uh, cumulatively builds up to permanent damage to the cells. Even louder sounds, like a cannon or a gunshot, could damage these and could break the stereocilia in a single incident. So wear hearing protection whenever you do anything as loud as a power saw, say, and definitely with really loud sounds. That's right. Well, this is a cool model. Thanks for making it for us and telling us about it. And thank you for helping us figure out how our ears work. You're welcome. That was fun.